ignore my bangs. I have not had them trimmed in two months, over two months, which is wild that I can even still like wear them as front bangs at all. Also, I think it's ironic that I'm starting off a video about my relationship as a blind woman with self-confidence and self-esteem by apologizing for how I look. And I think that speaks to like, like a larger issue with society. Like we as women in particular have been trained to apologize when we are looking anything less than what we feel is like our absolute peak. And that's, that's gross. We shouldn't do that. Will it stop me? Probably sometimes not because it's so ingrained. It's so ingrained. So I've made a video in the past, I think perhaps even two videos in the past about this topic, but I haven't made one in at least three years, I wanna say, probably since I was 25. And I'm 28, gonna be 29 in early February. And just like all things, my relationship with self-esteem and self-confidence has evolved and changed as I as a human and my life has evolved and changed. And I think it's always important to recognize that like most things aren't linear. There's lots of ebbs and flows and things change, people change, opinions change, feelings change. And I know that the way I've been feeling isn't the way I'm gonna feel forever, but it's how I've been feeling. And I wanna like capture this moment in time to share in, in case it helps other people who maybe have also been feeling this way, maybe if, even if you're not blind. Um, and also maybe helps other people, parents, friends, teachers of blind people, um, like how to help better communicate to them about physical appearance. Okay, that's a lot. I'm just gonna really, it's just another Molly Rambles video, that's it. I feel like I haven't sat down and done one of these in a while, so I thought it was time. And there's a lot of stuff I wanna talk about, so I have quite a few of these that I wanna film in the next few weeks, so give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy Molly Rambles, and uh, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell if you haven't already. So one thing about me is that I've looked young my whole life. I. I'm only 4'11", we all know that. People ask me like, why do you say it all the time? Um, because A, my short queens deserve to know they're not alone. And B, because almost always, like nine times out of 10, when people meet me in real life, the first thing out of their mouth is, oh my God, you're so much smaller than I thought. Oh my God, you're so short, wow. You look so much taller on the internet. So I always like to be upfront and honest with people. What's going on? Apparently I didn't take a breath on time. <laughs> so my body forced it. It was like, shut up Molly, breathe. <gasps> so yeah, I always like to, to tell people ahead of time. Even like back, way back when I was online dating, I used to tell people before I met them, like, just so you know, heads up, fair warning, I'm real short. Cause I'm the type of short that's like short enough that certain people are turned off by it. Like I have definitely had guys a number of times be like, you're like that, like you're too short. I wouldn't go there short. So, you know such as life, I guess, but I'm petite, right? So I've always generally skewed young looking. I think it's a part of being petite. We're like chronically called cute, even when we're 40. It's just like when you're tiny, people are like, oh my God, small human, like puppy. I don't know, it's weird. But I've always just looked younger, um, anywhere from like four years younger to like eight years younger, okay? I have always looked young and for a lot of my life that frustrated me. And then I'd say in like my early mid twenties, I started to love it. I was like, oh, this is good. This is good. Now, 28 hit me like a truck apparently, okay? Because all of a sudden, out of absolutely nowhere, people are guessing my age correctly. Have the wrinkles just appeared overnight? Like what happened that I went from looking like at least two years, at very minimum the past few years, at least two years, to all of a sudden like, yeah, you look like you're almost 30. You look like you're aging out of your 20s. And I'm not gonna lie, that's like messed with my self-confidence a little bit. Also worth noting, my mental health was in the absolute toilet ready to be flushed at points this year. And I wanna make it very clear that that also definitely plays a role, right? Like when you're not mentally feeling well, it's hard to feel good about anything, which includes your own like self-identity and experience in your own human body. But I really feel like the fact that I now look my age, which is ridiculous. Like it's not like people are guessing I'm 38. Like it's not like people are guessing I'm 10 years older than I am. Like people, which again, there's nothing wrong with being 38. There's nothing wrong with looking 38, but it's like when you've had this one thing about yourself your whole life that you've known to be true, and that one thing changes 
and you can't see why, that's difficult. And so what I've come to realize is as a blind person, and please, if you're also blind and have experienced this, share your experience down below. But I most likely blow things up in my head to be bigger than they are. Because in my mind, like, I now need a facelift. Okay, like, I'm like, what? All, all the years of squinting to see writing on my paper at school have just crow's feet everywhere. Like, I've smiled too much in my life. The lines are too deep. Like, I'm just like, what happened to my face? I remember, like, I did a TikTok and I was doing my makeup, just like blind girl makeup routine on TikTok. By the way, go follow me. I have so much fun over there. And I said, I always conceal under my eyes because I don't know if I have like dark circles or bags under my eyes. So I just do it to be like locked and loaded. And there was like two or three comments that I read that were like, oh, just so you know, you do have dark circles. Then in my mind again, I'm like, oh my God, I've never in my damn life been told that I have dark circles. And so instead of it being like in my mind, oh, this like very minor thing, it's like, I have dark purple under eyes. And it's just strange when you, when you rely on other people to know what you look like. And I think it's, it's kind of scary because I feel like I'm getting further away from the last version of myself I, I remember seeing. When people, you know, when I was 24 and people still thought I was 18, it was like, okay, well, I still probably look relatively close to the 14 year old self that went blind. When people guess I look 28, I know I'm 14 years away from that girl. That's hard for me. And I've talked about on this channel before how like I have nothing against Botox and I certainly don't judge people who use it, whether it be for medical reasons, because obviously it's medical um, or for like preserving aesthetics, like live your best life. You do you. I, I try my best to live a judgment free life because I think that's the best way to go. If you don't want to be judged, don't judge others, right? But for me, it's it's not something that I've ever wanted. And part of the reason I've never wanted it is because I fear changing my face and not being able to see the results. I fear like getting botched and nobody's willing to tell me and I'm just walking around looking overdone and nobody tells me. Or, you know, they inject in my eyebrows arch more and I can't see that to know if I like it. It's just weird not being able to see yourself. I don't know, like it's, it's just strange. And you can call it vain all you want, feel free, that's fine. But I think anybody, even the least vain person, would sometimes struggle without being able to look in the mirror and be like, I ain't doing half bad today. You know, like it's just sometimes nice to be able to look in the mirror and be like, Nah, they don't know what they're talking about. I have great under eyes. Or like, no, I still look cute and youthful. Wrinkles who? Like, I can't do that for myself, right? I can't, I can't self-validate. And I can, I can self, like self-affirmate, affirmate? Affirm? I can self-affirm. <laughs> like I do my affirmations every single day. Every single day I tell myself I'm beautiful. And I know my beauty is, is in my heart and in my mind. It's my brain, it's my humor, um, it's my sass. It's, it's like all those parts that make me who I am. We live in a world that can see, right? And I, before I went blind, I've always loved makeup and fashion and things that are aesthetic. I've loved home decor and tattoos and color. And I've always loved beauty in all of its forms. And to not be able to experience those things or entirely make decisions for yourself is challenging sometimes. I remember like years ago, my early 20s, I had heard about Botox being used to help treat like depression and anxiety, obviously along with other treatments. But essentially they were studying like how if you inject the 11 lines, which is where you can like frown, stopping the motion of your face frowning can help like stop sending the message to feel that, you know how they say like smiling can actually really help like turn your emotion around. It's almost like you trick your mind. So I went to a dermatologist who does Botox and I asked about it and he's like, well, I'm not sure anything about that. I'm happy to do it for you. I'd also recommend like getting it here to lift your brow line. And I was like, no, I'm not, no, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. And I never did it, but it was like, it's just weird when people tell you things like that because it feels like they're saying that thing is wrong about the way you look. And most people get to go home and look in the mirror and be like, nah, I cute, I can't do that. And my mom is the sweetest. Like she's oh, she always tells me I'm beautiful. 
she does it because she knows that like I can't really do that for myself and she is trying to be my mirror which I really appreciate. For those who surround people who can't see, like I said, family members, friends, whatever, you are that person's mirror. And I want to say as their mirror, be careful with how you say things because when you just say something like, yeah, you do have dark circles just so you know, they might be like blowing that up in their mind to be bigger than it actually is or than you actually meant it to be. I think sometimes when you're speaking to a blind person about things they can't see, you have to be like a little bit, I'm not by any means saying to lie, but you have to be like a little bit more gentle or choose your words more carefully or explain it better because we can't visualize those things. We can't conceptualize those things always. In fact, I would say there's some words that people use in relation to aesthetics, whether it be about a human or just about a physical thing, that I don't think I necessarily even know the meaning of. And it's funny because sometimes I use those words and then I'm like, did I use that correctly? Or somebody will tell me, I don't think that word means what you think it means. Because when people always use that word, I can't actually see the thing they're using that word about. So I can't create the picture of, oh, this physical thing equals this adjective. I don't know if any of this is making sense, but I really hope it does. Hi, I was just reviewing this video before posting and there was a couple more things that I wanted to mention. I think another element of this kind of like me aging situation, by the way, I no longer get ID'd when I order alcohol. That was a big indicator as well that I am- Mature. Aging. <laughs> Mature. <laughs> Visibly. Maturing. Thanks for the positive spin, Eve. <laughs> but it's like I'm I'm further away from, I don't know how to explain this well. Like say for example, makeup trends are rapidly changing to where things like cream blush and cream contour are, are really popular. And like those are things that I've never been able to really do. And I'm, I'm gonna experiment and push myself and try, but it's not what I use and it's not what I'm good at. And so when I hear all these like, youngins on TikTok be like, this makes your skin look so much nicer than powder and things like that. I'm like, oh my God, how does mine look? Hearing people talk about how like, oh, as you age, you need to like change your techniques and change the products you use. And I'm like, I can't see how my makeup looks when I put it on. I would say I often have this fear and this is by no means me like fishing for compliments. I'm truly just sharing this to try to help people better understand and help those who might also feel this way as fellow blind people to feel less alone. But like, I often feel like when people are like, oh my God, you're better at doing your makeup than me and I can see. Or like, oh, you're so good at doing your makeup. I never know you can't see, whatever. Just comments like that. I'm like, are they lying to make me feel good? Cause it is, it is something people do in society to disabled people. It's that kind of pity situation. They like pat us on the back for just a, existing you know and i worry sometimes when people say things like thanks Nate, <laughs> so like, that that's what people are doing you know and like similar to where i was explaining with botox like what if i got botched and nobody wanted to tell me it's like what if i actually don't do my makeup well and nobody wants to tell me it's like i don't know my mom is always gonna think i do a good job she's my mom which does a far better job than i ever do so so i don't know i think it's it's just it's strange and i also think Another element is that I live in a city that kind of glorifies cosmetics and cosmetic surgery and almost encourages and certainly normalizes it um, far more than most cities do. So that kind of just, it almost an expectation is there um, when everybody around you is doing something, is, is changing themselves, I'm like, well, I can't see myself. Do I need to change something about me? And I just don't know it. I don't know, it's it's just, um, I think all of those things like play a role. That's all, go back, go back to the other Molly. She was more eloquent, I'm tired. I've been up since 4 a.m. As I've said in previous videos, when I've talked about this, there are times when I think I have higher confidence because I can't compare myself to photoshopped images of people on social media and on billboards because I can't see my body changing, my face changing. There are times I think that I have better confidence because of that. And then there are times when I think I actually have worse self-esteem than I probably would if I could just see myself. And I think it just comes with the seasons, how I'm feeling with my own mental health, what else is going on in my life, 
what maybe like the trend and comments have been. It's funny, if somebody was to ask me, like rate yourself on a scale of one to 10, just purely on aesthetics, like I couldn't, I can't give you an honest answer where I think I f would fall. Like I, I don't know. It's just weird. And I, I know that people love to put, well, I know that people either love to pity disabled people or praise disabled people, which I wanna make a whole other video about, so I'm not gonna get into that too much right now. But I think sometimes people are like almost upset to know that blind people do care about aesthetics. Like they're upset to know that blind people do have things they are physically attracted to in a potential romantic partner or not, that they do think about and sometimes care about what they look like and how they present to the world because they like to think of us as this like neutral, like what if the whole, what if the whole world didn't care about what other people looked like and what we ourselves looked like? That's what blind people are like. It's like this better version of humanity. It's not. And it's hypocritical to judge us for having a very normal human experience with something just because you don't think that we should. So yeah, I do care about it. I do think about it. Just like it probably takes up space in most of your brains sometimes, what you look like, perhaps like things when you're looking for a romantic partner. I don't know, that's all I wanted to say is that I've noticed my relationship recently has changed with my own self-esteem and self-confidence or just like body image. And I wanted to talk about it. I know I talked about, you know, when I was on my journey of losing weight, um, I talked about how I could not physically feel the difference in my body, um, which is true. Like my body to me feels the same now as it did at my at my smallest weight and it, as it did at my heaviest weight. I don't I don't know. I cannot tell when I'm gaining and losing weight. It's like this very weird thing. You would think you could feel it, but you really can't. Like I don't know. I just can't. It's very bizarre. I don't know. All I'm here to say is it's weird not being able to see yourself. Fellow blind people, take what other people say with a grain of salt. Both the good, the bad, and the ugly. No pun intended. And sighted people, when you're communicating aesthetic things to blind people, A, be careful with your choice of words, and B, understand that we're not always going to understand the words that you're using or the concepts of visual aesthetics because we cannot see them. Yeah, it's weird to think that like, I don't know, that like bodies and stuff are a trend. Like that's really gross to me. Like I really thought as a society we'd move past that. And now I keep hearing like thins back in. Like, ew, gross, what the heck? Like every body should be celebrated as it is because every body is what it is. Like certain things are just not obtainable for, for most people. Like I'm always gonna have hips, butt, and thighs. Doesn't matter how small I am, how heavy I am. Like I will, that I'm just a pear-shaped body. And it's just like, Ugh, it just bothers me. And I feel like that's a good thing. Like, I don't feel like I fall into that trap because I can't see other women's bodies. I'm not like comparing mine and putting it down. And I felt just as confident at my heaviest and wore the same type of clothes I did at my lightest, you know? Like, I don't know. It's just, in those ways, I'm grateful. But aging is hard. Aging without seeing myself is hard, especially working in a, you know, famously cutthroat industry around appearance and youth in this business and in this town is king and i'm losing it guys i'm losing it 30s here i come thanks for joining me on another molly rambles and uh if you'd like to hear the conversation i had about this topic years ago you can click over here to check out that video or if you would like to see my cute little guy doggy get groomed professionally for the first time and have an emergency vet visit you can click over here and i'll see you next time bye